Let's take a look at my kick serve and my flat serve side by side and see how the location of my toss differs depending on which serve I'm hitting. Again, in these shots, I'm hitting into the add court. Now the serve next to me here is my kick serve and the serve further away is my flat serve. And you can see as I wind up with my flat serve, the toss is going into the court, but with my kick serve here, the toss is drifting over my head. And the reason that I'm tossing the ball in a different location is because later in the serve, I'm going to make contact with the tennis ball in a different spot than I will with the flat serve. And that spot, my point of contact, is directly above my head, which you can see right here. And that's the key to the kick serve. You need to toss the ball in a spot that lets you hit it directly above your head. Now that we've established that you need to toss the ball in a way that allows you to make contact with it directly above your head, it is worth mentioning that you have some flexibility in terms of how far you toss the ball into the court. And that flexibility depends on how aggressive you're trying to be with your kick serve. In the clip of me hitting my kick, I'm not being particularly aggressive, so my toss stays more or less in line with the baseline. But in the clip of Frank hitting his kick serve over here, his toss is drifting into the court. He's being more aggressive with his kick. And that's fine. You're welcome to toss the ball further into the court as long as your body follows your toss and you get your body under your toss when you make contact with the tennis ball. And you can see in the clip of Frank hitting, when the toss drifts into the court, his body follows, so his body position is still the same as mine at contact. Over here at my contact point, the toss is directly above my head when I hit it, and with Frank, the tennis ball is also directly above his head when he makes contact with it. So he follows the tennis ball into the court.